Welcome back. So as promised, um, I'm here today to do a Dragon's B 7 to 10 guide. Actually, I could go into B4 as well because there's a lot of people um, that, that are trying to progress into B4 because they, you, they can, you can pretty much do B4 with your Golem's B8 team if you have a decent Golem's B8 team. Um, I was talking about the Dark Thor. I use my Dark Thor and my Dragon's B10 team quite a lot, so I'm going to be showcasing that in this video as well. Um, I guess we'll we'll do B7, 8, 9, 10, and then we'll go and talk a little bit about B4. Um, so B7 is... This is like my go-to place if I'm really lazy throughout the week. Um, there, there's actually a reason to farm all these, like if you... Um, depending on what you want to farm. My recommendation is if you if you can, if you're like serious about doing dragons, um, you should build a B10 team. Even if it's not perfect, like even if it's not really really good, um, even if it takes you like a few refills to be able to kill the dragon, I think it's worth it because dragons is only farmable with these dragon sigils, and these dragon sigils drop on extreme mode when you're farming the story maps. Now, because of the limit of dragon sigils you can get every single week, um, the amount of runs that you can do, do, like the amount of dragon runs that you can do every week, is also limited. Meaning that you want to have the highest efficiency possible um, to get you the most like dragon, the highest tier dragon gems that you can get. Now you'll notice here that B10 only drops six six star to six star gems. So uh, my recommendation is for anyone that doesn't like that that's serious about trying to get like a really good siphon set that want want to progress to the late game and you know do that crazy like you know radis team that i'm running or like use like a fire gen to like farm story map insanely fast um if you want to rush to that phase of the game you would do b10 like pretty much exclusively because it always drops six star gems now there's a lot of people talking about how like um you know b7 to b9 drops gems that are that that are like siphon set or something like that um a lot higher but the ch they they also have a chance to drop like five star gems and because because you're you're focusing on like trying to get the highest efficiency um late game you want to be able to farm as far as possible and still be able to one shot all the all the waves um especially in in maps like um slumbering city and stuff you want to have like as much attack as possible sometimes the the moles if you're farming like this stage um my gin's not able to kill this this thing sometimes um but then again i have like two gins like on 100 percent crit siphon so they they basically like if one of them doesn't kill the other one will kill for sure so that's that's kind of how i take care of it um but when you're starting out you only really have one set and it's going to cost you astro gems to revive um i think it costs 10 astro gems every single time to revive or was it 20? Or was it 30? I can't remember. My, uh... My mind's fuzzy. Um, but anyways, you, you should revive to... You should always revive. Revive and and finish finish your runs. Um, basically, if you die, you just revive with your Astral Gems and then you just keep going. This way you don't waste your Dragon Sigils and you make sure that you always do a full run. Um, no matter how much Astral Gems that you're spending. Because eventually you can still... You know, you can... You can get the astrogen back. You can get astrogen from slime. You can get astro astrogen from doing PvP, from doing clan. Um, you know, if you really want that siphon set and you're not focused on like pulling or anything during like Heroes Fest or anything like that, then you should use all your astrogens to revive. Like it doesn't matter how many revive it takes. Just get to B10 and just keep doing it. Obviously, if you're if you're like if it takes you like four to five revives every single time, it's it's probably not that efficient like you're probably using too many astro gems and um you might want to work on a better team because you know you probably won't be farming extreme mode if you don't have the the like the team to do dragons you'll mostly still be farming golems um you want to progress into golems first and then eventually progress into dragons and get those those dragon gems so yeah i'm gonna so um that's pretty much it for b10 now why do some people farm b7 b8 and b9 um two reasons one one because they're lazy like i'm lazy sometimes i when i'm super lazy i just go into b7 and i i auto it <laughs> um it's possible to make an auto team for for b7 b8 i'm not sure about b9 though b9 could be a little bit tricky i need to 
think of something to, to kind of make it work. Um, but I think it might be possible to make a B9 team. Maybe like if you have like a full water team with like an evil 3 water purse maybe. Um, but I, I'm not too sure. Now the way I progress into dragons is I basically I skip through all the dragons. I just revive until I pass through every single dragon and I just started farming B10. Now when I started farming B10 it took me like two revives every run. Um, to, to farm it. I used like a CC team and it was still worth it. I got my siphon set I got my fire gin and I just started farming like mad like a hundred sigils every single week and um, And I that's how I get like my really really good dragon gems um, And then now that I have a lot more dragon gems. I basically I've been taking it easy sometimes I go into b7 um, to, to farm and then if I'm serious I can manually farm b10 now these teams, because your dragon sigils are limited, um, you probably won't have a lot every single week. You want to r run most of these runs on manual. You don't want to auto it. Now the team, the teams I like to use for for most dragons is um, is a CC comp. Basically, you want to build your team around a, a, a comp like this, and a comp like this can farm B7. Um, B8 is a little bit tanky. You you kind of don't want to farm it using this strategy, but B9 and B10, B7, B9, and B10 could all be um, can all be beaten using doing doing this. Um, if you're doing this, you might as well go straight into B10. There's no reason for you to be farming B7, but you know, for the sake of the video, I'll just show it. Um, what you want to do is you want to have like two monsters with some sort of CC, um, some sort of a hundred percent chance to stun, shock, sleep, anything. Like there's a, there's quite a few. There's like Water Sura, Dark Yasha. Fire Arthur, Light Valkyrie, Light Arthur. Uh, I'm thinking of a few that a lot of people can get a little bit easy. Um, some of these event monsters that I'm using, Spark it was a was a rebirth monster. The Dark um, Nike was a was a uh, rebirth monster as well. Um, there's what else do I have with 100% CC? Light Medusa was a rebirth monster from a while back. Um, Light Tiger, if you happen to pull him, he's one of the best. I don't have him, but because you can only get him from a Light Dark Egg. Uh, there's a few Nat 5s. Um, Water Odin. Uh, some Light Dark Nat 5s, like Dark Dark, uh, dark Valk. Also have a 100% chance to stun. Um, there was the Fire Spark hit. Yeah, the Fire Spark hit could also stun 100%. Water Sura is one of the most common ones. A lot of people have Water Sura, and he also has a crit lead, so that that's actually not too bad. Um, but I think Wood Yaksha is probably the best, because Wood Yaksha has like a crit damage lead. So that's actually probably one of the better ones. So you want to have some sort of monster that has like a 100% chance to stun. Um, the reason for this is because the, the waves, besides the Nat 5 monsters that you'll get on the first wave, Every single monster um, in B7 or in B10, B9 is different, but because um, B9 is the normal element. But in B7 and B10, light dark monsters have no base resist, so the monsters on the wave actually have no resist, meaning that you'll always stun them. This is really effective when you're far when you're um, trying to stun the side unit on the first stage or some of the units on the second stage. Um, you want to have this. Now, another monster you want to use is some sort of like strong um, dark attacker that like hits really hard. Um, Katito is probably the best. If you're farming this one, you could probably use like a light attacker as well, like the light um, light uh, dark dark Dartanian. He was a event monster from last month. A lot of people have him as well. Um, dark Seedler actually could work on this map. Yeah, he, he, he could probably nuke the dragon pretty hard. Um, probably won't be as good as Dark Katito. Dark Katito is like... Dark Katito is an event monster from a, a little while back as well. So he's he's probably one of the best. Uh, if you can't use some, something like this, you can use something like Dark Mona. She was like a package monster. A lot of people bought her last month. Um, Dark, Dark Sarah was an event monster. It also nukes pretty hard. You can use that to kill the dragon. Um, and... Some, some sort of like attack boost like if you have like dark moonflower that's like pretty pretty much perfect the um, the fennec that's like out this month could also work for for b10 for b7 because it's light and it hits really really hard 
All right, so um, you want to use some sort of light, like in B10 you want to use dark, um, but in B7 you can use use light attackers as well. Um, and the net, the final piece of the puzzle is a monster with some sort of a hundred percent chance to to put defense down. There's two ways you can do this. You can use a defense down, or you can actually use two dark attackers. Um, this also works as well. Some people do it this way. Um, I prefer the defense down because the defense down allows me to... Well, I, I prefer to use the defense down because you. Um, I have the Dark Thor. D the Dark Thor is on Rebirth this month, so a lot of people will be able to get him. He's pretty much the best monster for the job. If you don't have him, you can use another Dark Attacker. If you don't have him, you should probably grab him. I, like, I basically said it a million times in my last video, you should probably get a Dark Thor. Um, but yeah, he's very, very good for this. Now, we're gonna... Because we're showcasing the Dark Thor, I'll just... I'll do it with the Dark Thor. But if you don't have a Dark Thor, if you're watching this, like, a few months in the future, um, you could probably do this with a Water Shelly as well. Because Water Shelly has a very, very high attack. Um, and also can can do an 100% defense down. And and the Water Shelly's second skill is a single target. So it hits a lot harder. Um, so yeah, that's one of the good things about using Water Shelly. If you want to use a Water Shelly... It's actually pr quite nice. So we're gonna go in and uh, we're gonna we're just gonna stun everything basically. Now if anything attacks, they're gonna kill my light spark it, but probably none of them should be hitting me. This is one of the ways to do it. The, the, there's another way to do it. This is the way if you only have a B10 team. I'm gonna kill the Colt. The Colt's an attacker. Um, we're gonna try to stun the purse. Then she gets shocked. I think she has lower resist than the light purse on B10. It's so basically you just uh, kill her. She's pretty squishy. Their levels aren't super high. The reason um, this strategy works in B B9 and B10 as well. Basically, you you armor break one, kill it with a dark attacker. If you're using two dark attackers, just send them both on one one guy, and it will kill. And then you can stun two. Um, that didn't, that didn't stun, that just straight out killed him. Light Spark, you can tank a hit from the B. Um, you don't want to leave the Ghost alive. The Ghost is an attacker, so he actually hits a little bit harder. Alright. Um, an important thing about the dra Dragons is they have this mechanic where they they do this. Um, shadow Breath, or some of it's like Light Breath, or whatever Element Breath, whatever element the Dragon is. Um, basically, when you push them under 50% HP, they do this really, really hard-hitting nuke that um, also applies Thirst for this one. Some of them stun, some of them shock. I think B10 does shock or something. Um, but basically, if he does it, you're dead. Like, if you're not, you're using, most of my guys are attackers. Um, if, if he does it, you're, you're dead. Now, um, what we're going to do is... You want to you want to push his HP to near 50%, but not exactly 50%. Now he is an attacker, so oh shit, I should have done that. Actually, wait, he's dead next turn, so we'll just we'll just hit the side unit because I, I think the spark might push him under 50%. Basically, whoops, right, it's, it's fine. My Katito should be able to finish him off. Yeah, the spark does like insane damage. Basically, you use the first turn to damage him a little, don't push him under 50%, and second turn, you just straight out, like, nuke his face, and then he, he dies. Um, I'll show the gems to my, my units, but I didn't really want to show them until I, I was doing B10. Alright, so this is the light spark it. Um, it's also gem removal 100% off today, but I don't think I really have anything to regem. There, um, it's on ruin, double attack. Uh, this is my build for B10. I'm basically building this for B10, but it just happens to work for B7 as well. Um, it's because you can use the same strategy, but basically 100% crit ruin, crit double attack. Um, this is also crit double attack, 100% crit ruin. Um, this one is 100% broken set. It just, they just happen to be like decent broken set gems. I showed the gems to my Thor in the last video as well. 
Um, basically, they just had like pretty good sub stats and 100% crit as well because you want his you want his his defense down only procs on crit. Um, same with his courageous strike, so you want to have 100%. Um, my dark Victoria also needs crit to stun, so she has 100% crit on intuition. Um, didn't really have really good gems for her, so I just put her on a random intuition set. They don't have very good sub stats, but it's fine. She she does her job properly. So that's pretty much it for the um, for that team. Now I don't have a proper team for B9, um, but I could probably show show another strategy for B7 before we move on. The other strategy is you, you, because. Um, B7 stats aren't that high. You saw him attack my Dark Gatito. My Dark Gatito didn't even die. My Dark Gatito is also an attacker. So what I do is I just throw in a whole bunch of aggressors. You could probably do this with like, um, if you have like a whole bunch of light Nikes and a passive healer, you could probably do this. But the way I do is I use HP aggressors. I think HP aggressor actually is better because, um, I can't remember why. Why is HP Aggressor better? Oh yeah, he has like armor break. And uh And the purse hits pretty hard on dark on light aggressors. So dark aggressors are a little bit better. So if you have like Dark Birdie, Dark Miho, Dark Sea Star, um those are probably a little bit better. You could probably do this with bruisers. If you if you really can't, if you don't have like super good monsters, you probably shouldn't be autoing this. Um, the gem, gem requirements to do this is actually a little bit higher as well. So what I do is I usually I use my Dark Cupid. Um, I was I was doing. Wait, where's my? Yeah, you want some sort of sustain or HP lead. If you have um, a solo tank, that could also work. I'll do it three ways. I'll do it three ways. Um, now these teams aren't a hundred percent, but I if I die, I just revive with gems and keep going this is what i do when i'm super lazy like when i'm insanely lazy and i don't feel like doing dragons manually um i just throw this in <laughs> and i hit the auto button it's pretty stable it's like it like maybe fails once out of 50 runs but you you only have like 100 sigils so like maybe it'll fail like once a week so it's not too bad Because you don't have times 20, um, but what you can do is you can just like be doing something else and then when it's done, you just click OK and then it starts again. Yeah, the good thing is the Mihos also have super evolution, so their stats are like a lot higher and they also have skill books, so they hit a lot harder as well. Um, that's kind of how I did it. It's basically full auto, you don't have to do any clicking. Um, they can attack whatever they want, and it mostly is successful. You want to have some some sort of sustain. Um, I think the next best best thing, if you're if you're not like using a dark cupid, is use some sort of monster that has like HP based sustain. I think Wood Mammoth actually might be pretty good. You can run like Miho lead and then run like Wood Mammoth. It heals like 10% every single turn. And it doesn't need to crit or anything like that. So it's actually quite good. It didn't even need the Cupid's heal, but um, it just makes it more stable. Sometimes sometimes they need the Cupid's heal. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they, they just hit super hard. I'll do it with another team. There's multiple teams that you can do this with. The other strategy is use use a light tank. You kind of do the same thing. Um, so I'm going to go with an HP lead. I don't really have anything any really good. Like I only have the Dark Cupid. Um, I want some sort of HP lead that also has some sort of utility. Oh, if you had a variant light Shiva, that would be like the best. I'm not sure if my light suck in solo tank. Actually, yeah, she probably can. Look at look at her stats. The 
This is a little bit more risky. But uh, if you have a really tanky light monster, especially with an with a lead, like a if you have like a variant light Shiva. Um, light Shiva is like the fusion monster, so a lot of people have them. And now with the synergy bonus, they're gonna be like a lot tankier. My light suck is pretty tanky. She was a package monster from a while back. A lot of people got her with astrogens. Um, so she's somewhat common for for older players. She also has a heal, which is really nice. Ooh, that even crit on my light suck. She still didn't die. She has a she has a heal that heals for 10% a hit. So she's gonna heal 40% from this. Oh, if you have like Light Venus from the previous event, Light Venus can solo tank this pretty well. Just some sort of light monster with some sort of self-sustain can uh, tank this really well. I think Light Mona from a Rebirth a while back. A lot of people have her as well. She does it quite well as well. I think Light Suck does it really well. Light Shiva is pretty good because Light Shiva heals for 20% every single turn because of the Battle Rush. So you could probably use a Dark Monster with an HP lead. And then. Is there a Dark Monster with an HP lead? And then have a Light Monster solo tank. But yeah, this is like. I'm not going to show like farmable teams or anything for this because this is. Like, Dragons is much, uh, much harder than Golems. Um, it's a 4 substat. It's a. Five star gem. I don't want it. All right. Uh, it did have crit, but it was five star. I'm picky. That's pretty much it for B seven. Um, some of these are replaceable. It really depends on what you have. You need some sort of sustain, and you can't use Light Miho. Play Siren if you have her. She's actually quite good as well. But her. Uh, she doesn't give any HP bonus, so she's not that good. Um, Dark Birdie should be pretty good. Like, you could, if you, I don't have a Dark Birdie raise because you can put like Dark Birdie because Dark Birdie has HP lead for dungeons, so you can use Dark Birdie lead and then like Dark Miho and then like Dark like if, if you were playing during that month, you might have like two Dark Mihos or two Dark Birdies. Just run those. And then run like a Light Shiva or a Light Odin, and they should be Evil Three. Like if you're running this and autoing, should it should be Evil Three? Um, I mean, not a lot of people have Evil Three Nat Fives, but when you're at this point, you should probably like if you're trying to auto dragons, then you should probably have Evil Three Nat Fives. All right, so we're moving on to B8 now. B8 is uh, B8 boss just saps a lot. He's a tank type. He's really tanky. I can't use that nuke strategy. It doesn't really work against him. I normally... Um, normally the way to beat him is you run a team with a lot of fire self-sustainers. And you just basically just auto and nuke him down. That's how people auto this, this stage. But I don't have that. So I'm going to have to manual it. Um, so I'll just run fire suck lead. I'll run... Um, I'll run my two Dark Mihos, because Dark Miho OP. It's basically aggressors that can take damage and won't die. Um, if using fire attackers, like built on full attack, is probably the best, because they can just kill anything, and then if they take damage, they won't take a lot of damage because it's wood, and if they take damage, they can just heal it back instantly with their, uh, their self-sustaining skill. Like, Fire Suck's really, really good, because she hits when she crits, or she heals when she crits. Um, and then there is like... Some people use like fire healers. Like if you have a fire cupid or fire... Um, what's the other one? Fire cura. Yeah, some people use fire cura. Because fire cura has a shield. I don't have any of that. All my healers are light and dark. So... Uh, besides that water siren. Yeah, she, she is old. I only have like light siren. I don't have a lot of healers. I only have like light siren, dark cura, dark cupid. That's it. <laughs> I don't have a lot of healers, so I, I guess I guess I have to do this. I mean, I could use it with a light siren if you if you think dark cupid's OP. Light siren is pretty similar to fire cura. Um, she has a flash shield. Same with fire cura. 
and Farkir has a team morale boost. She has a s own SP morale boost, so I think she she can do it decently. Um, so we'll do it with this now. If you want to use aggressors, your resistance should be like actually wait. HP lead isn't even the best. It should be resist lead. Like everyone should have max resist. All right, everybody should have max resist. Um, one of my me hosts is max res resist. The other has like 70 something, so I'll use the HP, the resist lead. My succubus doesn't have any resist, so I'll use the resist lead to boost her resist. And my light siren only has like 70, I think. She doesn't have very good gens, so uh, we'll just do this. I think this probably might work. I think at the end of the video, I'll show the gems for like every single monster that I showcase in this video. This way, people can, or I even I, I talked about in this video. Um, I could probably semi-auto this, where I basically focus on on one monster, so they all nuke it down. Now, this this stage you'll notice that um, they're a lot tankier, which is all right. You just have to sustain through them. Yeah, they, they like do barely any damage, so you just basically just use something a little bit tankier. I'm not gonna heal this turn because uh, she's about to die. And then next turn on the next wave I'll be able to put up a shield. Actually wait, it doesn't matter. They're gonna they're gonna all die in one one turn anyways with the Focus nuke. Ooh, they didn't die. Actually, wait, that's good, because then my Mihos can have their uh, their super evil skill when they get to the third wave. They probably would have died if I tried to armor break them first and then nuked. Well, maybe not all of them would have died, but like most of them would have died. Now, for this dragon, he just has a lot of sap. That's what he's he does. That's why you want to have high resist. Um, your self sustainers doesn't need, really need that much resist, but I would actually still do it if you if you're planning to build a team to auto this, your self sustainer should have a lot of resist as well. Shield's also very good because then she, if you put a shield up, um, they can't sap you. I'll probably just manual this. Try to man, the side units were supposed to die like two turns ago. They're gonna do some crazy healing or something. I don't I don't even know what they do. Man, they have a lot of resist. This is annoying. Uh I think I might wipe. Oh shit, that's bad. Alright, I should have brought two sustainers. I should have killed the side unit. You know what? I'm retarded. I'm sorry. Man, he was supposed to get armor broken. What? He resisted so he resists the armor break so many turns in a row. Alright. This is not good. I should have br just brought two healers, to be honest. Man, why did why did they why did he resist my fire succubus armor break that many turns? That was unfortunate. He's super tanky if you don't armor break him, because he has like... I think fire sucks really really good, because you can just stack a whole bunch of them. But dang, that is some uh... There's some hardcore tanking. Come on, just, just die, just let go. Oh shit, that thirst. That dragon thirsty. Alright, no, he made my Miho thirsty. Oh shit, my Miho's dead. Go Siren, solo his face. Yeah, he, I think um, using self sustainer is best because you need to have high damage so his blessing isn't like making him stronger every single turn. Man, if I landed just one of those armor breaks, he would have died. I shouldn't have 
clicked on that on the second wave. That was my bad. I should have came in and nuked with the armor break. Like, I should have opened with that. That was, uh, that was my bad. Alright, I don't think I could semi-auto this. I think I need to full manual this. It's alright, we still cleared it with one revive. Alright, we'll try this again. I think, I think it was my mistake. It, it really was. I should have... On the second wave, I should have armor break and then nuke. And then I would have had all my my bar full on the third wave and would have killed the dragon. Oh shit, I should have used three dark monsters for the dark bonus. Yo, why, why am I trying to show this with like my shitty units? I should be using my best units. This is hard stuff. This is this is dragons. Ah oh, shit, they got their heal off. Now why is this July so tanky? Alright, now it's dead. Sorry, this, this wood valve doesn't do too much damage. Alright, okay, this is like just like last time. Alright, this is what I should have done last time. I should have done this first. Armor break most of them. And then do this. And then the ones that aren't armor broken should still be alive. Oh shit, why are they still alive? Alright, actually I could just do this, to be honest. This would have worked. Alright, and then I go into the dragon with all my bars full and everything. And then I, I open with this put up a shield so you can't like do anything weird and then did this for the combo damage somehow he still doesn't like doesn't armor break him and now it does and now he's fucked I'm just gonna max heal put up the shield again I actually didn't skill up my siren if I skilled her up she would have had like she would have had a three turn shield which uh which would have fucked him pretty hard. Yeah, see how much damage you do when, when he's armor broken? I think fire suck's the best. I'm building a second fire suck to like auto this stage. Ooh, that was, uh, that was unfortunate. Oh shit, why did my fire suck die? What is going on? Why is this stage so hard? I don't have the right units for this. I'm still working on more fire units. So I'm building another fire wall thing. What the fuck? She has like all near max resist. And those saps still land. What is going on? Oh shit, I think I'm fucked. Wait, we, we still might be able to do this. So if he if he hits my siren, we win. Okay, this was this was not a good clear. I'll put up the shield so he can't kill me this turn. I don't want to waste my. I don't want to waste another uh, ten astro gems. Might as well kill him with this. Go crit, crit siren. You can do it, crit. Oh shit! One more, one more hit, crit. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, that was so dumb. Like holy shit, what the hell? I think he crit my fire suck. I don't. I don't know why she went from a hundred percent to zero in one turn. Oh, it's, it's a really bad pugilist. Rip. 
Um, okay, we'll, we'll we'll try it properly this time. We'll we'll use a better team. We'll use my we'll use my OP Dark Cupid. All right, we'll just we'll do this. Cause that Light Siren's shield suck balls. Um, I'm sorry, it was it was a shitty shield. We'll have a proper shield this time. I don't have the units for this. Like I don't, I don't run these stages ever. I just, it's for me. It's either B seven or B ten. But if you want to build a team for this stage, it it should be like all fire. <laughs> it really should be all fire. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't have any light or dark units. Is that recovery down? Dang, she's critting me pretty hard. I'll just finish her off this turn, and then on the next wave, we'll put up a sh shield and and uh do everything properly man i can't even borrow friends monsters for dragon to, to do showcase i don't have any fire units all right i have like i think she's my one of my only ones i really don't have a lot of fire units i'm gonna save my uh save my nukes and stuff Whoops. I hit the wrong unit, rip. Sorry, I still have like a super thick shield. Dark Cupid OP, alright. Dark Cupid OP. I have a proper healer this time. There we go, let's do this. Alright, basically, I think you want to kill the side unit before the dragon reaches half HP. Is there a unit with armor break on first skill? And then some sort of self sustain on second? I'm gonna put up a new shield. He's gonna nuke me pretty soon. Oh, I think this Miho's dead. Ooh, he just completely broke the shield. Alright, this time it was at least clean. Basically, you just want to, like, you want to bruiser your way through this. It's just sustain damage, armor break debuff, basically. The easiest way is you use like fire sustainers. Just stack like four fire suck. There's a crit damage in. I'll upgrade it to see if it gives me crit rate, because it has an attack sub. Alright, so this is B9. Um, B9 is, is fire. I don't I don't farm B8 or B9. I was actually doing these for like the first time just now. I was I was testing them out with different teams um, just to just to make this video. But basically, to farm B9, you want to use the element advantage. You want to use all all water. B9 is an attacker. Um, I can't do that because I like as you can see, I don't have any <laughs> water monsters. Like my the wa monsters I use go up to like go up to like here. 
Like th these I don't even use anymore. Like my water purse is like evil one. These aren't exactly dragon material, so yeah. Like I have no water monsters, um, or or good water monsters. Um, basically, once you're doing these dragons, you shouldn't be using like monas and shit anymore. It should it should be like. Unless you're using them, unless you're using Nat 3s for a specific purpose, um, maybe to replace a certain unit. If you want to like bruiser through this or or some shit, it should be like, it should be Nat 4 or Nat like Evil 3 Nat 4 or, like Evil 3 Nat 5 only. Um, now since I don't have a proper team, the only way I can do it is using the same strategy I use for B10. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna just. Do that exactly. All right, I'm gonna go with this. My light like, spark it as well. Now, since he is an attacker, um, and most of these units on the stages are attackers, you will be able to kill them really, really fast with a new team. And you want to rely on your CC so you don't like take too much damage. Um, the fire candling is an attacker. He hits pretty hard. He's an at three. Now. Um, the side units on this stage is always these two, always these three on the first stage. So it'll it'll always be like this. All right, they won't have like weird random units. You want to stun the Arthur, Arthur, Arthur as much as you can. Um, I don't think this thing has really annoying debuffs. Oh shit, that hit pretty hard. All right, that was that was kind of scary, but it's fine. We'll we'll kill him this turn. Arthur would have definitely killed me for sure, so it was a good thing that we stunned him. Um, if you have a full bar on second turn, you can nuke it. If you don't, um, it's going to be a little bit risky because they could kill the unit that was damaged in first turn. Now, if they hit one of these, one of, if they hit like my spark it, for example, he's going to die. So. I'm gonna just nuke it. <laughs> I'm gonna put up the uh, armor break. Um, then we'll just finish this guy off. Generate as much red soul as possible. Just hit with everybody. So maybe he could get a heal. I was unfortunate he didn't get any healing. Which is really, really shitty luck, but whatever. This is the same way I do B10. It's like the exact same same method. What? Oh my god, the side unit has thirst. Alright, I'm dead. Rip. That was that was so unlucky. They it hit my Gatito with the thirst. That was so bad. What the fuck? I think actually I'm gonna try something. Since I never farmed this stage, I don't know. I might be able to kill him in one turn. Like, I might seriously be able to just one-shot him. I'm gonna try it next, next run. We'll try one-shotting the dragon this time. Like, we'll just nuke him on first turn and see if he... he see if he dies. Actually, two nukers might be better because the, the units have resist in this stage, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna try this again with two nukers. I never farmed these two stages, so I have, I have like, no idea. I'm gonna... And go with this. I think their first skill should be enough damage to kill the waves. Do I need to bring in the seedlers? All right, I think this should be fine. Should I bring in the seedlers? All right, let's try the seedlers. We'll, we'll bring in the seedlers. This will definitely kill anything with two heads. All right. <laughs> But I, I don't think I can kill the boss on, on first turn with this. But then even if he lands thirst, I, I can still like wreck him pretty hard, so. Oh shit, he didn't get stunned. What? What is this? Oh shit, my spark is dead. All right, this is not a good strategy. You should you should be doing something similar, but like all your shit should be water. Like this should be a water sura. 
This should also be a water sword, and these should, two should be like Evil 3 Water Valk or some shit like that. I think this thing's a tank type. Ooh, that was... That was a lot of damage. Man, I love using the Steelers. They, they, it's always such high numbers. Every single time they attack. Alright. Alright, that just pushed... That was all according to plan. Just pushed them to around 50% HP. Okay, that didn't work. That pushed him under 50%. He did his nuke. Alright, I'm gonna do it next turn with two Dark Atitos. Alright, we'll, we'll make this work. Well, at least that was one revive each. It wasn't too bad. If it was a water team, it, I wouldn't have... If it was a water unit, you know, it wouldn't have died to the water. The, the Ar author. Ar Arthur. What the, why the fuck can't I say Arthur? What the hell is going on? Alright, we'll, we'll try with two Gatitos this time. Because then they would have the morale boost. Then we'd fuck them pretty hard. All the way. Oh wait, sometimes it spawns the thing that isn't a candling. I was wrong. Oh shit, oh shit, I accidentally autoed rip. Oh shit, we're fucked now. I might get lucky though. Alright, that wasn't the worst. If I can stun him, I win. Nope. Oh, I'm sad. Oh shit, something's gonna die. That was so bad, why, why did I do that? Alright, we'll leave the Coco alive if there's a Coco. And we'll, uh... We'll stun one of these. We'll just, uh, we'll just nuke these two. Alright, with the Gatitos. As I predicted, he doesn't do too much damage. Um, see if we can stun this. Oh shit, actually I should have killed the Coco. Oh fuck, I'm, I'm dumb. I did this wrong. Actually, it's fine. We'll stun the kill, Co Coco killed a lot. I think that's the right choice. That would have been the right choice just now. Sorry, I'm, I have like no experience doing this stage. I'm just, I'm just doing it because people ask. They're like, how do you do these dragon stages? I usually tell them I don't. But we'll try this out. Let's see if this this can kill him. Oh, it was close. If I had four units, he would have died in one turn. I think it's possible. If my spark had lived, he would have died. He would have just... He would have melted. He would have just been gone. He would have 100% been gone. I don't think this stage is too hard. He... Because he's fire, you can use like water monsters. You don't have to do it the weird way like I am. You can use that element advantage. All right, I messed up on the first turn. That was my fault. So we're gonna we're gonna try this again. Okay, so we'll use these two to kill one of the candlings. Or stun. Doesn't stun, but we're gonna have to. Oh my god, alright, that was horrible RNG. This is not a good strategy to be doing B, B set, B9 with. It's better on B10 because the, the side units have like less resist as well. This, this Arthur just keeps resisting non stop. Hmm. I think using a water team is the only way to do this. If I want 100% clear without no with no refill cuz this is less stable than my B10 team. Like it's it's even worse to, to doing this 
B9 with this team than it is to do B10 with this. That's how bad it is. Alright, let's hope he doesn't kill my Gatito in one turn. Alright, that's fine. And these things have resist, which is really annoying. Uh, and they like to hit the same unit too. What if I armor break him on first turn? And then nuke him with the Gatito? I might actually kill him. I don't know. Actually, no, he's an attacker type, so I'm going to do that, that much damage. Well, can't hurt to try. If I had one more attacker, he would have been dead. Even without the, the nuke. That was just really unfortunate. I'm just wasting sigils at this point. <laughs> Alright, um, I guess it's time to move on. I, I don't really have a better team for this. There's not, not much I can do. But you can probably replace everything with a water monster. Like, if you had a water Valk, replace it with that. For another nuker, a good 4 star is like water Anu, water Loki. And then for CC, water monsters, like water Sura is the best. Like, run two if you have to. Just run like two water Suras. That'll definitely work. Alright, since we're in B10, uh, we don't have to switch this around. I'll use my regular B10 team. A lot of you guys probably have seen this a million times. So we'll we'll use a Thor because um, Thor is on Rebirth very soon. And I did promise to, to show my Thor in Dragon's B10. Um, very, very straightforward strategy. Basically this exact same thing. Now this strategy is more reliable in B10 because B10 the units have no resist because they're light dark monsters. So it's a little bit easier. I do this like every single every single week that I'm not lazy. Alright, so the purse has a 1 in 3 chance to make me wipe because purse always hits dark units. And if it hits the Gatito, I'm fucked, which uh, was the case. I'm fucked. But it's still fine. I, I can still do this with one one revive if I'm lucky. I do everything properly here. Actually, it didn't matter. I should have just nuked with all three of them. I didn't need to armor break them or anything. All right. So the trick is you want to push the dragon's HP under fifty percent if one of your units dies, and then you just. The armor break, nuke them as hard as you can. Use all your actives after your your Thor armor breaks every single turn. And try to push him under 50%. If you can push him under 50%, means that he's going to use his AoE to wipe the, the rest of you. And then when you revive afterwards, you can just kill the dragon really, really fast. So that's the... That's the strategy there. So you do B10 with one revive, and this is actually more worth it because if you clear B10 is a guaranteed 6 star gem. Now it doesn't even need to be the dragon set, sometimes it drops like really good gems that have like just really nice substats. Alright, this is not a good gem with very nice substats. Um, but yeah, this is pretty straightforward, you just... Uh, That just now was really unlucky that he hit my Gatito. Well, first of all, she resisted the stun and she hit my Gatito, so... That's kind of like... Basically, for B10, or if you're running this team, um, it took me a lot of time to perfect this. This is a team I made a long time ago, um, using these exact units. It took me quite a while to perfect this team. Um, this is basically the most stable that I can get it to. Basically, what you want to do is you want to create... Um, a situation where um, bad things can happen but you still won't wipe so just now you see that she resisted and um, she resisted my my stun both on both units but she has a one in three chance to hit any of these three 
Now she hit the Katito, the Katito would have died for sure because the Katito is gemmed on double attack. But these two are gemmed on um, one slot defense. So if she hits my Victoria or my Thor, they'll survive. And as she did, she hit my Victoria. So now I still don't wipe. And this turn, I still have a chance. I have three chances. Basically, um, she's dead for sure next turn. Now, if she, what I do is I try to armor break her. If it, does, if it lands, then I just nuke her with everybody and she's dead for sure. I just basically, it's like, it's all calculated. Uh, she would die for sure. If, if not, I just stun her. Now, if she really still doesn't resist both these stuns, I would have nuked him with, with my Katito's active. And she would have died 100% for sure. Um, on second wave, if you have your AoE off, I normally would just uh, do the AoE nuke. If not, the standard way to do it, pretend none of these units have their bars full. The standard way to do it is, um, because the cult have the highest attack, the bees also have pretty high attack. What I do is I kill one of the cults. The cults are the squishiest. So I armor break, kill. I stun this. Stun the cult. Now, hopefully she this thing doesn't hit my Victoria. And it didn't. I had a 1 in 3 chance. And then I... Uh, it's, it's all about chance, really, this team. And I kill the bee. Stun the cult. So you can see I'm a lot more experienced doing B10 than, than the other two stages. I was a I was a noob going into that stage trying to trying to make a guide for it. All right, so now we're at the boss. Um, now, normally at the boss, because the Katito is a morale booster, he's always going to have a full bar basically when he enters the boss stage. There's a chance that these two don't have have their full bars. Um, it's better if they do because they both have some sort of armor break on their second skill. So what you want to do is I want to armor break the dragon on the first or second turn. So I'm going to try to put the defense down. And if it lands, then I just nuke, it, nuke him normally with my normal skills. And it'll put him around like 55-ish percent HP, which won't activate his uh, active skill lightning breath. And then since he has the armor break and everybody has their bars full, we're just going to nuke his face. He's gone. And that's a perfect clear. That's how I do B10. Sometimes it gives me good gems, sometimes it gives me shit like this. I think that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much it for B10. That's all, all you really need to know. Um, a lot of those units can be replaced, but if you replace any of them, it makes it a lot a little bit less stable. Because basically, basically what you want to do is you want to have as many... What the hell is going on outside? It's a, it's a party. Um, basically what you want to do is you want to have as many safety nets as possible. So like if one thing fails, you head to the next safety net. And then if that thing fails, you head to the next. So this team, basically, there's a lot of safety nets. Um, if something fails, like if the Thor doesn't land the armor break, the Sparkets with their with his second skill can still land it. And if he doesn't land, the, the Victoria with her second skill, if it's active, um, can still land it. And then I'm using like 2cc so I can stun two units on the second wave. Um, and then I have like three dark units and these two are gen tanky. So if they don't happen to stun the purse on first turn, um, sh I won't 100% wipe with the Gatito. Like you can replace the Thor with a water Shelly. Well then it becomes a 50-50 chance instead of a 33% chance, you know, for you to, for it to fail. Um, so yeah, the, the more units you replace, the, the less stable it becomes, but it will still be relatively stable and if you have like the astral gems to spend and you really want your siphon set then i would recommend you like even if it takes like two to three refills just still do b10 all right so this is the um this is b b4 a lot of people farm this stage as well now my recommendation a lot of um a lot of people that start the game my my recommendation is if you're at the point where you have a pretty stable b8 team now if you're just getting into b8 and you like cleared it for the first time and you're autoing it for the first time um your team probably isn't strong enough your water motos and stuff should probably be level 60 like they should be a lot stronger you can basically farm this stage with your with your b18 and you do it on manual so um i'll go with the attack lead on my water mona water miho um i don't think my sirens gem is she gemmed 
Oh, yeah, she's not gemmed. Uh, I don't have any other water units. Alright. We'll pretend this is the second water Miho. Alright. Well, she's not gemmed either. Dang it. Alright, we'll pretend this is the water siren. Alright. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, right? She's Her, her gems aren't max, so it's like... They should have 6-star gems, by the way. Like, you should be farming BA for a while, and then you replace their gems with 6-star gems. Like, your Mona should be triple square. Everything should be triple square. Mine aren't triple square, because I... I, uh... I didn't raise those units. Back then, square slots w wasn't that good. Back then, stacking square slots wasn't that good. But you want to use, like, all water. I'll use my second water mode. This is a little bit cheating because my second water mona has siphon but i don't really have anything else to use so my first water mona is on a valor set triple attack um valor triple attack this miho is on a crit um double attack ruin these ruin gems are very bad they have no crit at all so it's quite shitty my hana is on a that recovery set i think it's like i think her gems are like double hp defense doesn't really matter just she doesn't really matter. She's just here to fill the slot. Like, she has no use here. Um, last one is my Water Mona. Actually, you don't even need a healer. I should, wait, I should probably use a healer. We'll, we'll pretend she's a Water Siren, because a lot of people have Water Sirens. If you have, like, three Water Monas, just run three Water Monas. That, that'll that also work. But I don't, I don't have that many Water Monsters. So you can see all my monsters are light and dark, so that's uh, that's my weakness. My weakness is the Norma elements. Alright, Candlelings are attackers, they hit pretty hard. Valkyries are balance type, she's also tankier, so you probably can't kill her in one turn. Candlelings you can definitely kill in one turn, so just, uh, just finish them off. Same with the other one. And then, since you're water, they won't do too much damage. And then you can just kill them with that. Now, my Mona has Siphon, so that's a little bit unfair. I won't use her active. We'll pretend she doesn't have a Siphon set. Um... Alright, that was pretty good. Alright, now since my first Mona has her bar full, the second one should probably have it full as well. So we're just going to try to armor break the dragon on first turn. Um, its breath doesn't really do too much damage, so you can basically just hit him under 50%. It doesn't matter that much. If the armor break landed, I would have killed her. I would have killed him on, on first turn. Like, he would have just straight out died. But since you're using all water, and they're all 6 star, um... They're not going to take that much damage. If you're using a healer, you can use you can heal. But actually, it's probably better to run four nukers because if I was running four nukers, my fourth nuker could have nuked him just now and probably would have killed him. So, so you want to run like four nukers. If you don't have a team for this, run like four water monas because you can you can use four water monas for B8. You can farm it really fast. Use water four water monas to farm like Skyfalls the XP stage really fast. And then you can start doing B4 like every single week to get your uh, to start getting your siphon gems early because they this stage drops four to six six star gems so sometimes like even if you it drops like a four star siphon gem you should still keep it you can use it to complete a siphon set sooner so um, definitely start farming dragons as as soon as you can. If you can't clear B1 to 3, just revive. Just keep reviving. Like, I don't I don't care. It could take, like, 30 revives. Just get through them. <laughs> get through them and get to B4. And then start farming it. Um, even if it takes one revive to do B4, I would actually still do it, to be honest. Instead of wasting your sigils. Like, you probably won't have that many sigils. You'll probably only have, like, maybe 20 sigils a week. That's still 10 runs. Like, 10 runs, you might be able to get a siphon gem. So... Still, still farm it. Alright, as promised, I will show the gems of every single unit that I 
used in this video. Well, I'll, I'll go s slow. Actually, I'll go fast. You can pause the video if you have to. Um, Simona. Valor. Attack. 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 Second Mona. Siphon. Attack. 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 Water Miho. Um, attack. Attack. Crit Rate. Um, who else did I use? I didn't use any of these. I don't want. No, I have that. Um, Light Sarn. Yeah, her gems are pretty shitty. Defense, defense, defense. Why does she have triple defense? Well, I don't know. I made her a long time ago. I never switched her gems. Like, it probably shouldn't be like this, but whatever. Dark Miho. Uh, crit rate. HP, HP. Second Dark Miho. HP, HP. Crit rate. Sealer. I think I used the first two. Um, attack. Attack. Crit rate. Attack. Attack. Crit rate. This one's attack, attack, crit rate as well, but it's on a broken set, so it's not as good. Skatito's 99% crit. Attack. Crit damage. Crit rate on Valor. This is actually higher efficiency to use the crit damage gem if you're using a Valor set. Um, Dark Nike. Crit rate. Attack. Defense. Uh, did I use three Dark Mihos? Yes, I did in one of my runs. HP, HP, crit rate. This is this is a very shitty set. Like she she does not have good gems. Cupid is uh, HP, HP, HP. My Hana is uh, HP defense. I think HP. I can't remember. Yeah, HP defense, HP. Spark it, attack, crit rate, attack. Also 100% crit. Um, I mentioned like Shiva. I didn't really use him, but you could use him to solo tank B7 if you're autoing. He's also on triple HP. He would have worked actually. Did I use Nike at all? I don't think I used my Nikes. I don't think they help. Um, Katito is attack, crit rate, attack. This one's also 100% crit, quite important. Um, Thor, defense, attack, crit rate. And that is that is it. That is everybody. I think that's everybody. If I miss... Oh wait, I missed Fire Succubus. Um, Fire Succubus is uh, attack, crit rate, attack. Okay, I think that's everybody. I don't think I missed anyone. That is that is all. But yeah, my recommendation is uh I feel like B B9 um B8 and B9 are actually levels that you might want to farm later on, like if you want to go back and you're lazy and you want to find an auto team. Otherwise, it's probably more efficient for you to just skip straight to B10, like just revive all the way until you get to B10. And then if you can do B10 manually with just one or two revives, then that's actually already very, very effective. And B10 only drops six star gems. So even if it's not dropping the dragon sets, um, it'll still drop like decent six star gems that you might be able to use. You know, the six star gem drop rate for like B B10 Golem is like six percent or something like that so you have to do like quite a lot of runs you have to do like 20 runs to get one six star gem um, and then if you're doing dragons basically every single b10 run you're getting a six star gem and there's a chance for it to be a pugilist or a siphon or a leech set so you know the, those sets are really really strong like it just pu um, pugilist is really good for pvp it just it stuns it's super op <laughs> And Siphon is just the best for farming. And the good thing about farming dragons is you'll also get the essences to get your get your Jin early. And he's like 
He's got to be hands down the best farmer in the game. Like, he is the best, all right? He's got fast animation. He's got the best morale boost that scales with his attack. He's got Predator. He's got a crit lead, which is offensively that works everywhere. And that's it. Like, that's he's, he's got everything. He's got good attack stats for a four-star. So, like, he's got to be hands down the best farmer in the game. You get these astral essences when you do dragons. Every 200, he can summon a gen. I actually gleaned my first gen to 6 stars. I do actually recommend doing that. If you have a siphon set for your gen, just do it. Like, it'll make your farming so much faster. I'll end the video with a gen run if you, if, uh, for newer people that never seen it. I'll do, like, Slumbering City or something. That, that Fire Seek is actually going to slow down my run because his animation is a little bit slower. I'll use the Light Vic. I'll run these three gens. I'm actually working on my third gen. They're all on Siphon, by the way. It's, the thing with Sunburning City is it's, it's not always fast, but if you have multiple ones, it's more likely that one, all you need is for one of them to get a full bar, and then they'll just wipe everybody. And then they'll just get a full bar again. And then they'll wipe everybody. And then they'll, they'll get a full bar again. Yes, this is what you can do with a, with a lot of siphon gems. Start farming dragons today. Get your gems. Get your siphon gems. And get some sweet, like... Sweet... Well, this was 41 second. But you can get to, like, 38 second runs. And it's, it's like this every single run as well. Like, it's stable like this every single run. So, you'll always have, like, really, really fast runs. Um, so, yeah. Start farming dragons today. Oh, it's a light purse lead. Light purse OP. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a pretty long video, but I did show all the dragons. At least all the ones that are worth farming. Um... But anyways, that is... I'll work on a proper... I'll start with B8. I'll work on a proper B8 team first. Like an auto B8. Um, once I have that, then I can... I'll show I'll show off that team. And eventually I'll have like an auto B9 team as well. Maybe one day we can make an auto B10 team. Well, actually, if you're a whale, you can make an auto B10 team. Just gotta keep reviving. Just put in some random units. Auto, and then revive, and then auto some more. Uh, but anyways, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.